Welcome everyone to a casted game for Stormgate. And today's spawning southwest corner of the map playing in blue, we have got Theory playing as the Infernal Host. And his opponent in the northeast playing in red, we've got Albino playing as the Vanguard. Welcome everyone to Broken Crown Hinterlands. And good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever we are in the world. Hope you're having a fantastic day, and we're going to see the scout out and about, of course, just to find out what Theory is up to. Now, the Vanguard versus the Infernal Host, we've seen a lot of changes in the matchup and the way it's played out. And, well, it's going to be an early conclave out here for the Infernal Host, looking to get the Gaunt numbers up as quick as possible. I wonder if Albino will go for the dog opening. We have seen quite commonly now the Vanguard opting for an early barracks, an early biokinetics lab, but looking to get Viridium Claws for the doggo, and it might even get a kill here. No, the Infernal Host do use the Imp Worker to build a structure, sacrificing it for the greater good. Now, behind all of this, Albino, instead of going for a dog opening, is going to go for a secondary base expansion on the natural, using four bobs that have been overcharged. So we'll get that second base very fast. And it's one of the great things about the Vanguard. They can power build their structures. And speaking about expansions, it looks like Theory is looking to do the same. The Gort looking to try and push the dog away. Does get a couple of hits with the Imp Workers. But ultimately at this stage, I mean, Albino probably wants to try and deny the second base as much as possible. Should go up now. And it should be relatively well placed. There we are. And he has got his second base cooking. But the thing is that the Infernal Host can't power build, so it will take some time for that shrine to get up and running. And that allows the Vanguard just to eke out a little bit of an advantage in terms of economy and bob numbers or worker numbers. Just like it's going to be a barracks opening, as you'd expect. Kind of standard thing, really. I kind of have to as the Vanguard to open up with a barracks. And just going to be harassing with a doggo just to find out exactly what's going to be followed up. Often the Infernal Host will open up with an Iron Vault as well, and there it is. So looking to get that classic Brute and Gaunt numbers up as an army combination. I hope you guys have been enjoying the casted games on the channel recently, and if you have, make sure you are subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss the next cast. There'll be plenty of casted content on the channel coming up soon. Now bear in mind the creep camps, the speed camp, is a, is a really kind of important aspect for the Infernal Host, because of course if they use a gaunt to infest those little goats and then kill the goats, they'll spawn fiends, and so of course free units. You can never say no to free units, it's always a positive thing. Well, if you're the Infernal Host at least. Now that Iron Vault just about to be constructed, Doggo spotting the three Gaunts, not able to move out just yet, so that's the power of having the Doggos on the map, although there's only one Doggo to be fair, so possibly three Gaunts should move out now, but obviously Theory is a bit cautious, doesn't know exactly what's his, in his way, because of course the Infernal Hosts don't really have a scout in the early game, so they kind of have to play it a bit blind, so he doesn't know necessarily when it's safe to move out, so he kind of has to wait until he has a decent army before he feels comfortable, usually with a brute or two, and can be getting a, uh, a nice bit of protection there with the shroud stone protect that second base expansion is actually chopping through on the west side a third base coming out for albino so it's gonna be a macro game for sure and uh, the, the interesting the nice thing about that is that when that happens the games tend to go to the mid to late game and we always love those kind of games of course you start to see the mechs coming out you start to see magmadons weavers you name it you'll start to see it most likely now bear in mind we are in the beta stages of gameplay so of course no tier three units for either faction just yet which is kind of exciting because the game is actually pretty exciting as it is. And so we're going to add more units and also a third faction at some point. Uh, the game's only going to get better. And it looks like, is that, is that going to be a second barracks? It looks like it's a biokinetics lab actually. So that's going to be important. We'll give them access to the exo unit, but also upgrades for any other units. Whether it be kinetic redirection for the lancers or whether it be quick draw hustle for the exos. We shall see what it decides to do now. Tier 2 can sometimes come in relatively soon for the infernals if he so wishes to do so but go for a third base first to match like for like two lancers poking away at the resource camps and probably expecting to see kinetic redirection coming in now the lancers is such a great unit for the vanguard by the way it scales so nicely into that mid to late game because of how tanky they are they've got a good amount of armor decent amount of hp but also kinetic redirection means that when they do get hit they get an additional five percent attack but also five percent movement speed so they can really dictate the terms of an engagement they don't have to fight if they don't want to if they get hit a couple of times, they can back away from the fight pretty easily. And bear in mind, the Infernal units are relatively slow. Like, they can't really keep up. So, you know, it's, it's an issue for the Infernals, I feel like. She, the movement speed of their units, they're pretty slow. And they do have one particular unit that's great for its range, which is the Hellborn. It takes a bit of time to get there, though. And you do need to mass them up if they're going to do significant damage. But it's something that maybe he could rely on here, the Hellborn theory, to try and counteract what is often an infantry spam. As you can see, plenty of barracks being built and... Yeah, I think, I mean, obviously Albina is probably going to go for that typical Lancer exo play. Get a bit of a death ball of army units. 
add in a couple of med techs, and the Vanguard will be feeling very stable and secure and very happy about the situation if they can get to that critical mass of infantry units. Speaking of infantry units, it looks like Theory moving out on the west side does get the flowers, so heals up on that doggo. Keep the units alive, and yeah, the, the Lancers will back on out of there. Now bear in mind, the Lancers do actually have a faster move speed uh, beyond the Brutes, so even Brutes can't really catch up. We can take the speed cap on the right side and get some valuable fiends on that way. Starting to build up those numbers. We'll take in the engagement Lancers, but you can see the kinetic redirections. We're going to get a wrap around now. There's a decent number of Lancers here. The Gaunts can't really get too much value, and the Lancers jumping right on top of them is so important. Because they chop through the Gaunts really quickly, and there's only three Brutes remaining, which are very low health. It's going to kill all of it. Bear in mind, the Brutes can't really get out of there. The Lancers, with the kinetic redirection and the movement speed, they'll catch up and take that Brute down. And that is a good pick off there for the Infernals. As the Infernals, you don't really want to be caught out like that. And he was caught out in a big way theory. Now that third base expansion is going to be exposed. Two Brutes going to try and defend, but it won't be enough. Does have a Shroudstone cooking. He's going to need that, although the Shroudstone might go up. Yeah, it goes down before it's even really coming out. And that's a problem. Doesn't look to get another Iron Vault and another defensive structure. But this is an issue. I mean, the Brutes are coming up in decent numbers now. Defensive advantage helping. Gaunt on the back line. And he will spawn some Fiends if he can get the kills on those Lancers. But it's difficult to do. Does have a couple of Fiends. But the Fiends get absolutely chopped to pieces by the Lancers. A lot of the Lancers are weak health. I mean, he's taking the fight and he should be able to clear this up here, Albino. But he might want to keep the units alive. Because they do have veterancy. That's something to consider for the Vanguard. The fact that if you can keep the units alive for long enough, they do get veterancy, which is super important. It really allows the Vanguard just to scale the army in terms of quality just by keeping them alive, keeping them active. And it reaches a critical point, actually, when you get a mass of Lancers and Exos which have been upgraded with the veterancy. It's super powerful. And speaking of super powerful, trying to push in with a lot of power on this third base, but is pushed away by the Shroudstone Manifestation top bar ability from the Infernal Host. Keeping that area alive, and just as well they used the top bar because it didn't actually have a lot. A couple of Brutes, a couple of Gaunts, but it was really the Shroudstone that pushed that away. And it's going to be a fourth base coming out here for Albino, looking to macro it up. And he's in a good spot, i got to say. Lots of army, but I mean, think about Albino's situation. He uses the flower to heal on up, and just as well, because there's a lot of weak units. I would love to see him maybe get a couple of med techs. It's a really powerful addition. You do need tier two, though, as a Vanguard to be able to get that. But he's got the barracks already set up, so tier two. And you're laughing with those med techs. So I suspect that'll be coming out relatively soon because, well, for the Vanguard, it's incredibly important to keep your units alive. I mean, to be fair, with any civilization, any faction of any RTS game, it's important to keep your units alive as much as possible. But particularly for the Vanguard, when you consider the veterancy aspect of their game mechanics. Either way, it looks like the Infernal Host are going to be moving out to a fourth base as well, looking to match like for like. And a lot of imp workers there as well, looking to get the static defenses. Probably a couple of Shroud Stones, probably a couple of Meat Farms. Looks like mostly, uh, yeah, I think there's two Shroud Stones and two Meat Farms there. Either way, Static Defense is certainly going to be helpful. And it's going to need it because there's quite a lot of Vanguard units moving across the map. But no Med Techs. Oh, there is a Med Tech there, actually. In the northwest corner of the screen was there for a second. And uh, that will be helpful to heal up all these units. Uh, only one so far, but I'm sure those numbers will start to increase. The Meat Farm's already up, and he's going to look to challenge that a little bit. And this is an issue for the Infernals. He needs to try and protect this area. The, uh, the expansion was obviously given away by the... Scout Doggo there, the sensor drone, which is currently a placeholder artwork, of course. And uh, we'll take that base down, which is actually quite significant. Oh, no, no, actually, I think he deletes that. The Infernal Host tries to keep the worker alive, or the worker does go down eventually anyway, but at least he keeps the resources. Weaver's coming out, drags in a couple of Lancers, and Doombringer too. Kind of exciting to see the army starting to develop for the Infernals. Really starting to scale in terms of quality, adding in a couple of Weavers and a Doombringer too. And the great thing about the Doombringer, it can be used as a drop mechanic as well to move units across the map quickly, but also can be deployed in the mid-map to just put some Shroud down and increase the white health of your Infernal units. Now he's looking to get that fourth base eventually, but a good bit of denial, good bit of delayment on the expansion there for Albino. And behind this does have the mech bays up and running, so maybe seeing some Atlases, maybe some Vulcans. Vulcans can be very nice to see, especially when they start to wind up the Gatling gun charge and do significant damage. Two medtechs now healing on up. Let's be careful. Might lose a couple of Lancers here. Diving in a little bit. Does lose one or two, and, but he wants to put the pressure up. Oh, the Infernal Host. They have used the Flame on ability on the workers, and they do so much damage, and I mean, it's a decent amount of damage, and they're still having reinforcements coming on the back line, and medtechs healing up what they can. Quick draw hustle, just allowing the Exos to retreat quite quickly, and also the Kinetic Redirection on those Lancers. There's actually a Hellborn or two on the map for the Infernals now. They could use the range advantage that they have. They've got a range of 14. You compare that to a, an Exo, 
that has a range of 7. That does also have a shadow cleft here, the Infernal, so could tech into some Magmadons. Could be useful as a frontline uh, aspect of that Infernal host army. Either way, mech bays are working hard. We do see Atlas is popping out, and it's going to be a fifth base expansion now for the Vanguard. And uh, looking to really macro it up here, but take a look. The drop might be coming in soon for the Infernals. Where is he going to move with that? And what's inside? It's probably mostly Gaunt, I would have thought, but sometimes you can sprinkle in a Brute or two. Maybe looking towards that fifth base, actually. That would be kind of nice to deny this. Good timing for the Infernal Host. No army there in position just yet for the Vanguard. He's going to spot the workers there. Will he drop it there? Or will he go for the primary? He's going to drop it there now. Oh, wait, it's mostly imp workers. Okay, he's going to flame on and take it out. And he does take it out. Maybe he didn't have to use all of them, but he wanted to make sure. And he does flame on and take out that... Uh... That's actually a pretty big deal because that's 400 Luminite. Which he doesn't have he doesn't have the resources to immediately rebuild that. Oh, Weaver draws in the Atlas. Great play there. So what they do best, the Weavers. But doesn't quite get the kill on the Atlas. Didn't quite have the backup army to take it out. But a decent number of Lancers. Annexos pushing on on this direction. It's kind of an issue for the Infernals. A good start to the engagement with Weaver. But ultimately, the numbers just looking so good here for the Vanguard. He's starting to push in. Does have an Atlas 2 deployed. He's going to start to put some pressure on, for sure. Hellborn's, though, going to start to push that back. Oh, the imp workers, they flame on. They do a lot of damage on the Exos. Lancers can tank a little bit against them, but the Exos do get squished. And that unfortunate Atlas does get weavered into the uh, the Hellborn. Gets taken out. Magvador's charging on through. Brutes trying to get a surround if they can. And really the range of the Hellborn helping out here. The Invelos pushing this back nicely. And expanding potentially to a sixth base in the bottom right. We can see a blue dot. We'll see what he's up to there. Now, the Vanguard have expanded in the northwest as well. I'm looking pretty active on that area. So it probably has quite a lot of workers. They're going to get the vision camp on the right side. And that'll allow the Infernal's host to safely move on to the west side. Atlas deploys, gets a good hit on the, uh, the Brutes. And the Atlas is looking strong, especially with that upgrade. Has the Plasma Arc Infusion, allowing... Well, when the Plasma Ball does hit for the Atlas... It, Kind of sets the ground on fire, dealing 15 damage per second for all the units that are walking in there for 5 seconds. So you definitely want to get out of that. Now looking to take the creep camp on the west side. Alice is deployed. Does get a couple of those gaunts nicely done. Good pick off. And he's always threatening, but keeping the army in front of the Atlases. Looking to keep them safe and secure. Evac on the field. So looking to use that typical Atlas micro with the evac. It can be really powerful. And the best thing about that as well is the Weavers, when they try and get on top of the Atlases, try and drag them in. One way of getting them out quickly is using the Evacs, of course. Going on the right side, the Vanguard. Oh, but he's, he's going to lose two Atlases pretty cheaply here. The range attack, maybe will he lose them? Yeah, he should do. The Fiends will get on top of that. Either way, on the right side, two more Atlases poking and prodding. Lancer's front line is pretty strong. Not much of an army there for the Infernals, I've got to say. Trying to take out a couple of the reinforcements with a couple of Brutes. Fiend's going to get on top of that. But here come the Atlases getting so much damage. They look to take the creep camp as well. They're getting in the way more than anything. Shadowflyer there. The Shadowflyer could take the evacs. And that could be dangerous. Because if you lose the evac in the air. You lose the units that are inside as well. But the Plasma Arc Infusion from the Atlas is getting so much damage. Lancers charging on through. He feels confident with the numbers he's got. Atlas is deployed on the Hellborns. On the back line. Does drag in the Atlas there with the Weaver. They could take that one down. But the evac transports it out of the way. That's absolutely huge. Magmadon trampling on through though. Will stun a lot of the units. Now the Magmadon does have the, uh, the ability. The upgrade which allows them to stun the enemies whilst trampling. And it's very effective for the Infernal Host. Comes out of the Shadow Cleft, and it is called Demon Hoof Tremors. And it's going to expand the economy here a little bit further northwards, the Infernal Host. Looking to try and get as much Luminite as possible. Three Atlases on the back line. Three Medtechs, four Medtechs, in fact. Pushing this back. We do see the Flay Dragon coming out for the Infernal Host. Does restore the White Health with the ability and sucks up the damage. But uh, he's walking into the Plasma Confusion ground. And the damage from the Atlas is, a, is a pretty hefty. Two Weavers kind of caught. They're pretty slow to get going. And they might be sniped. It's pretty big here. The Infernals don't have all that much army. But the Hellbonds are starting to push that back a little bit. The Vanguard should feel confident about their chances here. Although the Flay Dragon is always a bit of a concern. The Fetid Breath can give a mass infest. The Atlases might actually deploy there and look to take out some of the workers if he's got vision. He does have vision and he's going to take out a lot of the workers. Bear in mind he's got plasma confusion, so those workers walking along the ground there will slowly burn to a crisp. Hellborn's on the back line. Evac jumping away with the Atlases as best that they can. Weaver's trying to get the Atlases down onto the low ground. Doesn't quite manage it. 
And the Vanguard starting to build up that Death Ball army, but a lot of them are your new units, right? They haven't been upgraded with the Veterancy. They lost a couple of lives early on, and we'll see if Albino will be made to pay the price for that or not. Either way, good engagements for both players all round. Great game of Stormgate so far. Another expansion coming out for the Vanguard, and it's important at this stage of the game, 15-20 minute mark, because it's kind of when your Luminite nodes start to expire on your primary bases. A couple of fiends, just moving around the right side and keeping active. It might look to try and take down that expansion, actually. It might get it, because it's not really fully built. Hardly half built yet. Sensor drone coming in, just to see what it can find. Ooh, a couple of imp workers moving west. Where are they off to? Plenty of workers on the Ethereum. Evac going to be helping to defend with the Atlases. Fiends get on top of that. And I think, I don't know if he deletes that in the end. Tries to save the resources. Either way, the Fiends going to get on top of the Atlas. Should get one of the Atlases. Although, no, the Evac drags it out of the way. We saw how important that could be. And, yep, he keeps it alive. Great micro there by Albino. Moving on the west side. Looking to get that Luminite. It's going to pop into and see an, actually a hangar bay. Oh, Flamon comes in. It's going to get a lot of the workers there. Ten of them. They all should go down. It does go down. Actually, to be fair, he survives with four, but he does take out the command post, which is pretty significant. But there's a lot of weavers. Atlas on the back line there. On top of the ramp, quite a few of those Exos trying to chomp at the bit. Does have a couple of Lancers tanking on the front line, but so many weavers. They've got so much HP on them. The question is, there's not much of a front line for the Infernal Host, so I'm not so sure about this fight. He does drag in a couple of units. Now, the Atlas still getting good value. Flayed Dragon coming in the back, and if they get a mass infest, that could do some damage. Fiends are popping out left, right, and center now. Brutes tanking that front line for the Infernal Host. So many weavers. He does bring in the Atlas, takes it out. Kind of a tough one to call, but he is going up on top of the ramp now. The Weaver's starting to make a slow charge with one or two Hellborns on the back line. A couple of Magmadons too. But yeah, I mean, the Infernals are finding it difficult to take out this mass of Exos. He has got the expansion up and running again. The Vanguard. Moving around on the right side. But he's kept the mass of Weavers alive and he's adding a couple of Spriggans too. We could take that health cap and heal on up. But certainly, we're starting to run out of Luminite in the primary bases for both players, and the secondary will be the next to go, most likely. And he is healing up with the med techs, it's all important. Because, of course, whilst the army is, army is static, you'll get some value with healing up. Although, Ibwork is coming in from the north, takes out the med techs, at so many Exos. A great play there by the Vanguard. Fetid Breath comes in for the Flay Dragon, just to add even more trouble. Spriggan trying to chase down, and it comes with the top bar ability to try and get the shroud stone just to cut off the reinforcements and the retreat but doesn't get too much value in the end with the hellborns actually able to range that and the bobs having to back away for now but the imp workers flaming on was absolutely fantastic we've seen it i think for the second time in the game right yeah he did use the imp workers on the right side to deny that command post for the vanguard and just then he took out a lot of army weavers starting to make a move forward but two atlases could get a lot of value on that low ground Brings them away for now. It workers trying to get a flame on. He'll get a flame on on the uh, command post, maybe. He backs away for now, actually. Looking to keep them alive. And maybe get another wraparound at some point. He's going to use the the fiends to take out the command post in the end. Atlas gets dragged in. Uh, not enough to necessarily take it out. It does get dragged away by the evac. Magmadon's charging on through. Stunning a lot of the lancers, which is a big deal. Atlas is deployed once again. Trying to get on top of those Magmadons as he can. Magadon numbers are starting to dwindle, but still has two more charging forward. Plenty of Weavers and Hellbulls coming on the back line, and the, I think the economy here for the Infernals is really supplying the army. It's really helping. But he needs to maintain this push, because if the Vanguard can stabilize, it will be a problem. And he's taking a lot of losses. Does drag in another Atlas or two. He should take out one of the Atlases at least. Should take out the second as well, potentially. No, he just about gets away with it. Maybe, we shall see if he survives or not. But the push is strong. The Fiend takes it out in the end. That's absolutely huge. And he'll take another Atlas too. This is a strong push for the Infernals. I'm not so sure the Vanguard have enough here. The momentum definitely on the side of the Infernals. Theory pushing on with so many Weavers. I've got to say in pre previous casted games, I haven't seen the Weavers do all that well. But with this number of them, it looks like he's found a way to make it work here, Theory. And he's uh, definitely making it work well. Push pushing into that third base now. And moving forward with the Magmadons and... Well, a couple of Magmadons were going down, a couple of Exos moving, perhaps trying to get out of there, but it's, tr it's, a, it's a struggle. He's kind of cornered in a way. He does use the top bar ability, the shield's up on the flat cannon. They can try and make it survive for as long as possible, but Hellborn's on the back line, Weaver's tanking on that front line. 
Fiend's getting some damage as well. Magma coming on the west side, looking... Oh, there's so many Fiends getting on top of those Exos. I think he's going to lose everything here. The Vanguard's struggling to hold on. Army numbers dwindling. This guy looks like he's going to go for that second base and take out infrastructure. But there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Albino taps out. A great play there by Theory. He puts Theory into action, takes the game on Broken Crown Hinterlands. And I hope you guys enjoyed this casted game. If you did, well, you're definitely going to want to watch another one I casted the other day. It was an absolute banger. I'll leave an end card to that video on your screen right now, if you want to watch it, that is. Take care, and see you next time.